This is the Lone Stag here with detailed instructions on how to jailbreak 2.0.1 with WinPwn. Okay, here's how you start. First, you want to download a bunch of stuff. You're going to start off downloading WinPwn through this link on my website, which will be in the YouTube information side. It's a free download, so it might take a while, but I've already downloaded it. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to need the firmware, the right firmware, for this jailbreak to work. You, if you have an iPhone 3G, you're going to want to download it here. iPhone 1st Gen, here. And, of course, you're supposed to buy the iPod Touch firmware uh, legally from iTunes, but it'd be awesome if you could just click here and do it. I know that might be illegal, but I can't remember. And then, of course, you're going to want the uh, latest version of iTunes right here. Once you've got everything downloaded, which I do, you're going to be ready to start. Once you've downloaded everything, you're going to want to start getting everything ready. So make sure your iPod is in firmware 2.0.1. To do that, you're going to use the file you just downloaded and uh, restore it through iTunes using a shift restore. So you hold the shift button, press it, and then click restore. And then you're going to select the firmware you downloaded, which should be that one. I've restored it to save time, so it's already in 2.0.1 as you can see. Okay, also you need to uh, start getting Wimpone installed, but you want to make sure that if you've ever used Wimpone before that you uninstall it from your computer. So make sure you do that. Um, then you're going to have to install Wimpone from where you had it, see, extract it, download it, and here's Wimpone. Okay, then you're going to want to start Wimpone. So, right here, click browse.ipsw. So, you're going to click that, and you're going to select the firmware that you are currently running, which, of course, is 2.0.1. And there you see uh, Wimpone has to load it, and says it recognizes it, which is good. It's what you want. Now we're going to do the IPSW Builder, which is pretty much going to make you a custom firmware. I recommend installing Cydia Installer and the YouTube Fix right here in the first Applications tab. Cydia is pretty much the exact same thing as, as Installer, except it's better. And installer, well, you already know what that is. YouTube, just in case. I don't know. You're going to also, next tab, go to custom images. Because this pretty much shows that you've hacked it. And pick a good image, search online. Now, the boot logo, that means whenever you turn it on, it's going to have instead of the boring Apple thing. And this is my personal favorite. I have my story logo. I love Linux. So we're going to do that. Custom payload, you do not need to worry about that. And partition resizer, you don't really need this unless you're like a super hacker or something, in which case you probably won't be watching this. But what it does is it resizes how big your application folder pretty much is. So you only need it at 500. You know, there are only some programs are only a megabyte or usually less. Either way, now you're ready to build it. So click Build IPSW. I recommend saving it to the desktop because it's easier. And then you're going to click Save. And I'll replace it. I've already done this. So Once your IPSW is done, it will be time to pwn iTunes. Now make sure iTunes is running in the background and click iPwner. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to go to the custom firmware that you just made and double click it after clicking iPoner in here. And now it's going to uh, start poning iTunes. It's pretty much going to say that you're allowed to use the custom firmware you just made to run the iP on your iPod or iPhone. Okay, it'll see the window comes up. Your iTunes has been pwned. New mode. Now to do this, you're going to turn off your device first, 
slide power off, you know, it's a pretty simple thing to do. And you're going to make sure you turn up the volume all the way up on your computer. See the USB beep? You're going to want to hear that. It's very important. Now what you're going to do is you're going to hold power and home for 10 seconds first. And then you're going to let go of power while still holding home. So we'll watch. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010. Let go of power, hold home. And you're going to wait until you hear the USB sound and then let go. That's something else. There you go. Once your iPod has been put into DFU mode, you're going to want to do a shift restore in iTunes. What you're going to do is hold shift click restore and you're going to go to select the custom iPod software that you just made through WinPone. Note that if it doesn't work, you get some sort of error, which happens. I don't know, it happened to me once out of the three times I did it, but I think I just did something wrong. If it doesn't work, you have to do the whole process over, okay, starting with a uh, not jailbroken 2.0.1 version of your iPod, okay? I know it's stupid, but you just got to do it that way, okay? But you'll already know how to do it. So you click that and then wait for iTunes to load. Okay, now if everything worked correctly, you should have a pwned 2.0.1 iPod or iPhone. Now we have to do some final touches here, which are pretty basic and stuff. But you need to do it anyways. You can see mine's already got applications on it because I've been on 2.0 before. But yours should be pretty blank. What you're going to want to do is go to Cydia Packaging. I've already uh, moved it because I like it there. It's going to refresh. And it's going to ask you to uh, do some mandatory changes right here five essential upgrades and you're going to want to do that it's quite important confirm and this should be pretty quick city is pretty much better than installer especially as of right now now you're going to want to exit and then uh, like i did hit home and then get back on here it's going to reorganize automatically restart when done but you need to do this because it's just going to move stuff around to give it more space and then that's when we're going to use boss tool but when you open Cydia next time it's going to ask uh, who you are pretty much a user hacker or developer uh, I suggest using clicking user for you guys I know most of you probably aren't familiar with Cydia but um, it's pretty easy once you get used to it go to sections down here Go to all packages and we're going to scroll down to boss tool. Right here. Now you click it, click install, click confirm. There we go. Now I'll refresh, click the home button. And there's Boss Tool right there. And you're going to want to open it. And then click Relocate Fonts. See right here your disk space it says 59 megabytes of 500. Click Relocate Fonts. It's going to do it. Okay, it's going to move this. It's going to take 30 seconds. Don't freak out. Okay. It's not going to look like it's doing anything right now. But it's doing it. Doing... There you go. Fonts already moved. Look at that. 169 megabytes out of the 500. Which is a lot. And now you can go back to Cydia and uninstall Boss Tool because it's not useful for anything else after that. Uninstalling it won't change everything you've just done. It'll just take Boss there. So now go to Manage down here, Packages. It's, yeah. Now click Boss Tool, Modify, Remove, and Confirm it. And there you go. Now you've got a pwned 2.0.1 iPod or iPhone.